Hey there, everybody. Welcome to um, our very first actual live class. So hopefully everything is working. Um, as you can see, I am in Bugs Bunny's house. If you're not familiar with Bugs Bunny, <laughs> he is uh, he's one of my, my favorites. I used to watch him all the time when I was a kid. And so I thought, what could be fun? Oh, what, what's going on? You see this with the hair over here? This is so strange on the screen. That's because of the green screen. Oh, well, it just looks really, really weird to me. Anyway, um, I, I used to watch them all the time as a kid, and so I was trying to think of where could I be today? <laughs> so I thought it would be fun to be in Bugs Bunny's house. So here we are. Um, anyway, uh, so today we have a, um, a watercolor class. This is a free class for everybody. Um, gosh, I hope, I hope I do a good job with this. I'm a little nervous. I haven't taught watercoloring in a long, long time. So hopefully you guys will learn something uh, here. I'm looking at the screen. Alan, do I look really, really red on the screen? Yep. Let's see if we can do something about that. It's always hard to get uh, the saturation and everything right on these things. It's kind of strange. I thought we had tested all that stuff. So hopefully that's a little bit better. Anyway, um, I am not fried like a lobster so <laughs> anyway um so today and and welcome everybody i'm so glad I, I i think we've got we've got quite a few people here i uh, let me see who's here i'm going to take a look we're, we're now streaming by the way to three places so we're streaming to youtube and the facebook group and the facebook page we've got two hours here today and i'm going to try and keep everything contained to that so who do we have here i'm going to look uh where am i right now i think i'm on youtube um I think that, yeah, YouTube. So I've got uh, Crafts by You, uh, Candace. Hey, Candace, Shelly, and Sue, and uh, oh, wow, looks like Sandy's here. Hey, Sandy, and Marilyn, um, Andre, Rosie, Pat Dunbar. Oh, my goodness, so many people. Let's see. Who else? Uh, let me give a shout out to. With, we're all, I'm over on one of the Facebook ones here. I can't tell which one right now. Um, Blanca's here, and Sheila. Donna, hey everybody, Judy, oh my goodness, Stephanie, what are you doing here? I thought you were spending the day with hubby. <laughs> nice of you to check in. Um, Sheila and Cindy Patty, Kathy Myers, oh my goodness, it's so good to see everybody. And then I think I've got the other Facebook over here. We've got Elizabeth and Beth Hogan, um, Kathy, Linda White, Beverly Gleason, Kathy Marvel. Oh boy, it's so good to see everybody. Um, we're we're going to get right into this because we've got two hours, and to be honest with you, I could probably spend two or three hours just coloring or just watercoloring um, an image. So hopefully you guys have everything you need. Um, any kind of flora will do. I'm going to be I'm going to be working with our cherry blossoms, and um, I had the list of everything. It's not a lot of stuff, um, but I'm going to show you everything. So we're going to switch the camera right now, and we're going to get started and get right into it. Um, oh, and also, um, since this is two hours long, it's, it's quite a long time, uh, we're going to do a short five-minute intermission at the one-hour marker uh, so that you can get something to drink, you could go to the, the restroom, whatever it is you need to do. So let me see if I can get the color straight on here. How does that color look, Alan? Does it look good? Sure. Sure? <laughs> All right, Alan is my husband, if you're not familiar with who he is. Um, this is actually what we're, let me switch over. This is what we're going to be working with today. And um, I was originally, this, I, I, I worked with this particular stamp set when we did one of our lives. I made this card, but I had already had it all painted. And I think we just kind of finished it really quickly there. And I was going to work with the cherry blossoms again today. And I was originally going to do a different layout. And I thought, you know what, I don't want to spend time on that. Because the more I started thinking and playing with, with the layout, all I was doing was adding more flowers to it. And I want to make sure that we can complete this in the two hour time slot. And I don't want to just keep redoing and redoing the same thing over and over again. So we're going to actually make this card because I think it'll, it'll, we'll be able to get through it all. Um, I do want to start over here. This is a color wheel. This is just a little printout of a color wheel that I printed years ago, actually from just from the internet. I keep this just a little tip trick, whatever you want to call it. I keep this, I keep this at my desk all the time. Um, it helps me to, to remember, you know, which colors are my complementary colors, you know, which colors are side by side on the color wheel so I know how they're going to work. It's a really, really quick reference. Um, 
we're going to be working, and, and, and just so you know, the, the complementary colors are, um, they're opposite each other on the color wheel. You know that they're going to look absolutely gorgeous together, but you can also use, you can bounce those colors and use one of those colors to kind of shadow um, or to bring depth to the one that's opposite and on the color wheel when you're coloring, whether it's with watercolors or markers or whatever it is. So I always keep this on hand. I'm gonna set this right up here because I like to have it near me when I'm working. It's just a really, really good reference. Couple more tools. Let me see what we're gonna have here. This is the stamp set. Let me move the card over here. This is the stamp set that we're gonna be working with. Now, if you don't have this, it's perfectly fine. You can work with your own cherry blossoms or any flower that you want. Um, we're, I, I would recommend that you're working with a flower because we're gonna be talking a little bit about you know, the curves of it and stuff as opposed to uh, if, we were, if, if, if you're working with a character that has a face and skin and hair, that's gonna be very, very different than if you're working with a flower. So for today's purposes, I do recommend that you work with a floral. And let me get my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. You're also gonna to wanna to have your little paintbrush on hand. I recommended either a double zero or a triple zero. Um, I'm grabbing a, a, a triple zero, it doesn't matter which one. You wanna make sure it's, it is a rounded tip, not a flat tip. And um, I work with, with Winsor Newton. Winsor and Newton, you can work with anything as long as it's a, it, it, it really just needs to be kind of a medium quality. I wouldn't go and you know make a huge investment in the best watercolor brushes I can. Um, just just an, an, an average medium quality. You wanna make sure that it has really good soft uh, bristles on it. You don't want those bristles to be pulling out of there or just falling out as you know, some of the lesser expensive, you know, cheaper ones will do. Um, so this is my trusty tool. We're also going to be using, oh my goodness, let's get this big old box over here. I am going to be working with the uh, these are by Karin or Karin, I'm not sure how to say it. Anyway, it's the Brush Marker Pro markers. I happen to have the 72 pack that includes the 12 neon colors. Um, we also have a 60 pack, which the only difference is the neon colors, and I think we have a smaller 24 pack as well. These are fantastic watercolor markers. If you don't have these and you're working with another watercolor marker or even um, just a watercolor palette, Perfect, doesn't matter. Use whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you uh, have, on ha have on hand. I recommend these current markers because they have a really, really good array of colors. It's already pre-mixed and, um, and they're just really, really easy and fun to use. Uh, the other thing you're gonna wanna have is water, whether it's, mine's a little tulip cup, if you just have a little Dixie cup, paper cup, or whatever it is, a juice glass, doesn't matter. You want to have some water on hand. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, another thing I want to mention, the paper. And all these were in my list. Let me get my water out of here before I spill that on me. All of these were in the list of, uh, of recommended materials, the things that I'm working with. This is the paper that I'm, I'm gonna be using. It's Fabriano, which is my favorite paper. This is a cold press, um, aqua, aqua, oh, for goodness sake, try and say that, Aquarello. My mouth isn't working. But this is a cold press, 100% uh, cotton, extra white, which is really nice, so it doesn't have a yellowy color to it. But it is cold pressed, so you're going to find that it has, it's a little bit bumpy, has a little bit of a tooth to it, which is really nice. Um, but it's not so, I mean, some of them are really, really bumpy. Um, the cold press, it, it's a really, really good, thick, uh, heavy paper so that it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a lot of water, which is really nice. Now, if you have any questions as you go along, my husband, Alan, is here. He's going to be combing through all three of the pages where we are streaming. And um, he's gonna let me know if you have some questions and I'm gonna try and get them answered as we go. And I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna try and take this kind of slow, but I do wanna make sure that we get through it. So um, here is my card here. This is cut to, I don't even know what this is cut to. I think it's, it's not, this is bigger than, than an A2 and I'll trim it down when I'm done with it. So I think what I did is I just took my Fabriano, which is a nine by 12, and I just, I just cut it into quarters. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp 
my image. Let's see where am I going to put these? Let's put these here. I'm using a hybrid ink. If and, and I'm actually stamping it in in a brown. Ours is called iced tea. I stamped it in a brown because I'm working with something from nature. And um, when I work with something from nature, I if I can, I will stamp it in a brown or a gray or something so that those those lines will kind of disappear a little bit. And I, I don't if I stamped it in black, you would see all those black lines real strong, and I don't want that. So I'm stamping it with our hybrid ink, which is going to be a water safe ink. So if you have another ink that is good for use with waters, then by all means use that. So I'm going to go ahead. Alan, do we have any questions from anybody yet? So somebody said, I had no idea, I'm assuming you meant the stamp set, beautiful stamp set, I had no idea it was that big. Yes, it is that big. This is a six by eight stamp set. So you get all kinds of goodies in here. So I'm gonna stamp with the largest stamp right here. And um, I'm gonna take that on a diagonal. I'm gonna stamp it down toward the bottom here a little bit. Let me get that out of the way. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to leave a little bit of space here so when I put my, my sentiment there, I've got room for it. So yeah, this is a really, really good size stamp set. It's got all, this, all the sentiments and things in there. Um, could you tell me where, if there's a big difference between hot and cold press? Um, you know, to be honest with you, I'm not a real expert on it. A hot pressed paper is going to be, it's going to be really smooth. You're not gonna have a tooth to it. Um, I, I use a hot press all the time. I, I'm using a cold press and very specifically the, this Fabriano because these markers are fantastic. When I worked with one of my Fabriano um, hot press papers because I wanted it to be really smooth, it, um, the, the markers didn't move as well on it. So you are gonna find, I will tell you this, you're gonna find that depending on the paper that you use as well as the coloring medium that you use, and it's not just watercolor, I mean watercolors there, there is a, you know, it's, it's not just water. So it, it, it is a mixture. You're going to find that they're going to work differently on different papers. And um, so this one, these, these, these card, uh, the, the card markers work absolutely much better on the cold press. And I'll talk about the difference in the application and the techniques as we get into it because certain techniques work great on the hot press but not on the cold press. So a big difference, I mean, it's, it's the way that, that they're made, and I can't get technical on that because I don't know, um, but you are going to find a cold press has a bit of a tooth or a little bit of a bumpiness to it, and then the hot press is going to be really smooth. So this, by the way, oh, I'm so excited about this. I ordered this. This is my new uh, Misty from Hero Arts. I ordered this, I think, two months ago. And um, it, it has finally arrived. They are back in shipping. They were allowed to get back in uh, and, and get orders shipped. So um, I, got, I got both this one and the small one. And they literally were delivered today. So I'm really excited about it. So I'm going to go ahead now. Because this, is, this paper is a little bit bumpy. Let me see. I'm going to mark this up. We should probably zoom out a bit. But I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this up. I'm probably gonna to have to stamp this a couple of times because the paper is a little bit bumpy. And I'm not worried about whether or not I get an absolutely perfect impression with this because I'm gonna be painting it and I'm gonna be defining the areas that I wanna define. That actually did really, really well, but I'm gonna give it right in the middle here, I'm gonna give it a little bit more and some of the areas, no matter how much, how many times I stamp this, I may not get a great impression because the paper's a little bit bumpy. That actually worked very, very well. I'm happy with that. And I'm not even concerned about the fact that some areas are a little bit darker, some areas are a little bit lighter, because a lot of that is just going to kind of blend in as we go. It's going to be neutralized. I shouldn't say blend in because it's not going to react with the ink is not going to react with the water because the, this is a water safe ink, but I'm going to be going over it with my color and defining it with the edge of, you know, of, of the color that I'm going to be applying 
to define the flowers. And so you're really not going to see that brown very much at all. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing put away. Actually, I'll leave it out because I'm going to need, I'll leave it out like that so I don't have to keep opening it. Because um, I'm going to have to use that again. So let me get all set up here. Now, in terms of the Karin markers, let me show you this. I'm only going to be working with five of these. So we're going to achieve this gorgeous look with only five colors. So if you want to grab these colors, we're going to be working with a pink and a purple. Let me move this over here. We're going to be working with a pink and a purple. If you have the current markers, if not, then just get a really nice, you know, pink and a purple. Uh, this is Cerise, which is number 375. Red Lilac, number 358. These, if you look on the color wheel, and this is why I chose this. If you look on the color wheel right over here where we have the red, red, violet, and violet, all right? This is a red lilac, and this is a pink, all right? So these are going to come kind of in here like this. And so this is a version of a red, and this is a version of a purple. They're going to be absolutely stunning together because they're technically next to each other on the color wheel. So they're going to complement each other. And I shouldn't say, they're not, they're not going to, um, they're going to complement each other in the sense that they're going to be beautiful next to each other, but I'm not going to be using one to really shadow the other as, as if they were opposite each other on the color wheel. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's my interpretation of it. <laughs> I am by no means an expert in color. And then we've got... These are the three greens that I chose, or two greens and a brown that I chose for, um, for the, uh, the leaves and the branches. So we've got curry, number 297, olive green, 281, and then sandstone, 174. Okay, so these are the only five colors we're going to use. If you have, you know, a really nice olive green, this one is more of a, it, I, it looks green on the cap, but this is more of a brownish green when we look at it. Um, sandstone, this is kind of a, like a caramel, like a caramel brown. So if, if you have those colors in your palette with whatever you're using to paint with. Candace is asking, do you also stamp with brown when working on realistic animal stamps or just with flowers, trees, etc.? Um, no, absolutely. Depending on what I'm doing, I, I will stamp with brown. I, I stamp with brown a lot and I stamp with gray a lot, like a silvery gray. We have one called Alloy and it's just beautiful and it disappears into the background a lot too. I use brown a lot if I'm going to be doing something that I want to look a little antique -y as well, if I, want it, if I want it to look aged. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started here. Now, something else I always keep on hand when I'm watercoloring is some sort of, you could have like a paper towel. I have an actual little towel here that I keep on hand. Um, let me move a couple of things on my screen here so I can see better. There we go. I have an actual towel on hand because uh, I, I, I will wipe off my brush a lot. I'm going to try and line this up in a way that you guys can see what I'm doing because I don't want to... I don't want to zoom in too much. I think we're zoomed in a decent amount, but I don't want to zoom in too much because then you won't be able to see everything. So this should be good and dry at this point. All right. I'm going to take my greens and browns and put those aside. I'm also going to put my red lilac aside. And I'm going to work with this beautiful pink, Cerise number 375. I'm going to open this up. Now, one of my little tips, too, is never open up your markers over what you're working on because if, and I don't mean just card markers. I don't do this with my Copics or anything because if this tends, if this kind of drips or, you know, blots a little bit of color, I don't want it on my picture. So I always open up my markers away from whatever I'm working on. Now, I'm going to talk about how you can watercolor there's, there's two techniques that, that I use. One of them is a wet to wet. 
and then um, one of them is a wet to dry technique. So if I'm going to be working wet to wet, that means that I'm going to be applying water first to my paper and then I'm going to bring my paint to that. If I'm going to be working wet to dry, then I'm not going to be applying water first to my paper. I'm just going to take my wet medium directly to the paper. Something else I should mention, I have, this is not the usual board that you see when I'm doing my live sessions. This is a, it's a non-porous mat and I'm using this because I use this to blend my colors. You can use a wax paper. You can use um, one of these little, this little plastic sheet here if you just want to lay that down next to it. Because this is going to, it's not going to absorb. It's not porous. You can, you can go like this. I mean, you could color, get some of your color right there. You can work with it on your water or with your water just like this, right? When you're done, you can wipe it away. So I do that a lot if I don't want to get this mat out. But I did remember to get the mat out this time. So let me wash off my brush there. And see, I wash off the brush. I go right to... My, paper, my towel. So if I were you, I would have something here because have something that we're, you're going to be able to apply the color to as we get a little bit further into this. But right now we're going to start wet to wet. And I'm going to start in very small sections and I'm going to move from my sections all over the place. I'm not going to be working in sections that are directly next to each other. A watercolor is going to flow through water. So if I wet this area here and I apply color to it and I then wet this area here and I apply color to it, if there was any water between the two right in here, those would just merge together and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to work in very small little pieces all around here. So you're going to see me jumping around and watercoloring is also a lot about layering. So we're going to be working as we go. I'm dabbing in, getting a little bit of water. Um, I don't, I don't think, I don't. Know. Can you guys see? Let's, let's, let's put the question out there. Do we need to zoom in a little bit? So I add a little bit of water, and now I'm not going to be coloring this in. I'm literally going to be touching the color down, and you can see because I added some water, that color moves. Get a tiny little bit of water and I'm now going to just push this through and I'm not going to go all the way to the tip. All right, so I'm, I'm not going to the tip of the flower. I'm leaving some of that white and I'm not even moving the color all the way through because I want it to stay more vibrant and darker in the center. So I've done that section there. I'm going to now just apply some water in another small section. I'm going to touch in my color, tiny little bit, and then I'm just going to use my brush to move that through just a little bit. Rinse off my brush. And this is something where I, I mean, I, I put music on when I'm doing this. I'm going to come to another small little area. The music is just something so that I've just got a little bit of background. Touch that down a little bit. These current markers, the paint is strong. I'm going to leave this area here. I'm going to move up into this tiny little bit here. I'm going to dab that one time and watch that shoot. Did you see that move? Leave that little bit of pink. And I'm just going to kind of go through thinking about where I want my color to be. This is a small little flower up here. Touch that down. The color just moves itself through the water a little bit. And I'll, all I'm doing with my brush is helping it along. Tiny little spot here. Touch that tip. I probably shouldn't have gone in that area because it was right next to it. Just a tiny little bit. Let's 
move over to here. Now I'm going to wet these two small areas because they're very much divided by that branch. I'm going to dot a couple of pieces or a little a couple of dots of color into here. So you can see why I'm telling you to use a teeny tiny little brush. All right, a little bit of color. I'm not worried about whether or not I have the same intensity over here as I do over here because I'm going to be playing with that as we go along. So I'm going to make my way down to these areas down into the next flower. This is kind of one big petal right in here. I'm going to add a little bit of pink. Just dot a tiny bit in. And then I'm going to move this through just a little bit just to distribute that color a little. So this is kind of like your base coat. Kathy is saying, what size brush do you use? This, I use both a double zero and a triple zero. This one is a triple zero. The double zero is just going to be a little bit bigger, but not much. What kind of music do I listen to? I actually, <laughs> I've been listening to the Indigo Girls like crazy. My husband's probably really sick of it. Um, but I do, I listen to the Indigo Girls uh, a lot lately. Uh, Amanda Marshall is a favorite of mine. I put her on. Um, to be honest with you, I, I, was, I was on the treadmill earlier today and I had rival sons on. So I, I have a really good, <laughs> a really good uh, mix of things that I like to listen to. There we go. So just touch that down and move it through the water a bit. And then I'm going to come across the flower over to here and get this area. So when I'm up here and I'm in my studio, because my studio in the house is on the second floor, um, it's incredibly relaxing, very quiet. I put some pictures. I don't know if you guys saw it, but I put some pictures. I do have room for a second person. I'm going to soften that. If you find that your edge is a little too strong, then clean your brush, get all your color off of it, and just apply a little bit of water. That's another thing I love about these markers is, um, is that they're very, very forgiving. So here I put my color at the base. And I'm going to move that up just a little bit to white. Here this petal goes up and turns. So that tells me that we're going to have a little bit of a darker color up underneath that little turn right there. So all I'm doing is laying the foundation of my color. I'm going to move over down to here a little bit. I didn't clean my, pen, my uh, brush very well there. There you go. So I'm constantly going back into the water. Touch down right at the base and then pull that color and move it out just a little bit. It does seem, it, it, it may seem a little tedious to do, but you know, you got some music on, it's actually quite relaxing. And I will literally spend hours. What happened to the camera? Nice. How did that happen? Oh, we're already a half an hour in? Oh my goodness gracious. I'm going to try and get through this. I don't know if we'll get to the point where we're going to be actually making the card, you know, assembling the card, but that isn't really the point of this anyway. The point of this is to show you my process that I go through when I'm painting an image. So let's see. I'm going to come down here to this area. One of the things that's really nice about this image too is that it has a lot of shadows in it already. So it gives you an idea 
of where you want to have some of the deeper color. Dab a little bit in, a little bit of water. If you touch down and the color's not moving, then you just need a little bit more water. All right? So now I'm going to go back up into this area. And then some of these places, I'm going to start up into these small little areas right up in here, these little buds. color at the base the more water you put down the more that color is going to move through it but that also can mean that the less you can control it because if it moves too much on its own you've lost control of it. Do we have any questions from anybody? What type of ink is best for watercoloring? Uh, well, I'm a little biased. I use a hybrid because I like to use one ink for all of my applications. Um, you want to basically, you know, when you're reading your labels of your ink, you want something that is not a water based ink. That would be my suggestion to you. Look at the inks that you have on hand, there's a lot of them. You want something that is not water based. If you have a water based ink, then you're going to be activating the color of your ink as soon as it touches the water and you don't want that. Move this through. Now I'm, this is really seriously just a first layer that we're putting down. It will get to be much prettier once we get this layer down. I like to leave a lot of white on the flowers at the tips for these because I think it makes them look a lot softer. Now this is one where I'm going to bring my color up just a tiny little bit and I'm going to pay attention to the shape of this particular flower petal and I'm going to leave the white at that tip. Sometimes you have to take a look at these and figure out what some of the images or what some of the shapes are. So my darker color I'm putting at the base of the petal like where they kind of connect. I also have, um, it gives me a nice separation between petals too because I'm leaving the tips white. So these tips here are white. And then I come in with the pink right down here. I'm literally just jumping to areas that I know are dry and don't have any color yet. And don't feel like you have to move the color absolutely everywhere with your brush. If you touch that color down in the water with this wet on wet technique and the color moves out in a way that you like it, if it looks beautiful, then leave it. Water coloring is fantastic if, um, you know, if, if you allow the water to do some of the work. Can you pick color directly from marker tip? Um, you can. I wouldn't do that with the brush, but you can go tip to tip with these markers just like you do uh, with a Copic marker. 
if you want to modify the color. I wouldn't put the water on it. I don't think you're going to pick up color that way very well. So let's say bring this in here. Get that color a bit. So you can see just from this little bit already that it's starting to look it's starting to kind of come to life a bit. So I'm going to put the color at the base there, but then I'm also going to come up here just a little bit with this petal because it bends over. So I'm going to keep that light right in there and then keep this a little bit darker up in here. Brush off some of that water. You have to really pay attention to how much water is on your brush when you're working. Also, I don't work with a really wet brush because I find that I lose control if I have too much water on my brush. And that's another reason why I like to work with a really small little brush like this. But you can see just after a few minutes that this is already starting to come to life. And I know this part of it seems a little bit tedious, but it is very necessary. And we have this flower over here. And you know, I find too, sometimes as I go through and I'm working on this, um, sometimes I think I'm done with the color. I think I've gotten everything and then all of a sudden I look at it as I'm moving on to the next color and I realize I completely missed a petal. Now, if I were if I wasn't putting the water down first, this what this color wouldn't be flowing as well as it is. It's a, it's a very different application when you do that, and we are going to do that. So you'll see the difference. And I'm also not putting a tremendous amount of water down. Ooh, that moved beautifully. I'm not even going to touch that. I like how that moved. So let's see. Sometimes it helps to even, you know, keep in mind too, when you're looking at the, um, the back of our, um, our packaging, you will see, hold on, that we include colored images on the packaging and those will show you, um, use it as a guide or a suggestion of how you can add the color. Kind of your highs and lows, your areas where you want shadow and highlight. Any questions from anybody? What color is that? This color is called Cerise. It's this number 375 in the Karin marker set. So let's see, we've got this little area here. So this tiny little area. All right, this is an area where I'm going to grab my, there we go. If you get too much water and the color is not working very well, if you get it, if you hit it before you um, get it with like your, your towel before it dries, you know what, I'm holding up my marker <laughs> too much. I have to allow the color to come down. I'm noticing my marker is, uh, if I'm, I'm holding it up a lot and uh, so the color is not really flowing like I would like. Look how pretty that is. Just a little touch down and we're good to go there.
Let's see. I think I've gotten just about everything on this upper portion of this. Get a little color in here. All right. I'm going to move into this section here. Very gently. Isn't that pretty? It just, it comes to life so easily. I love watercolors. I could sit and do this for, well, I do. I sit and do it for hours when I'm painting. Time just passes and I don't even realize it. Everybody painting? You enjoying what you're doing? I'm just going to move some of this pink right over into here because these areas are very similar. There we go. We'll come back around to these petals in here. Look how pretty that is. It just moves. It's one of my favorite things to watch when I'm watercoloring is just to watch how the water moves the color around. So pretty. Don't even have to do any more with that. When the areas are really small like some of these, you almost don't, you just have to touch in there and let the color, let it go. Uh oh, I hear Alan typing. That tells me you've got a question coming up. Oh, you're answering the questions? Look at that, my crafty husband. What was the name of the stamp set? Ah, Cherry Blossoms. It's a beautiful stamp set too because, you know, we have this one big Cherry Blossom stamp in here, but then you can create your own arrangements with it because we have several different uh, pieces in there as well that are separate little flowers. So you can really customize it. You can build into a beautiful big arrangement. Look at this. I don't even have to, I don't even have to do anything with that. I just let the color move through the water. So pretty. Let's move back up here. So I think you're going to find that this is probably the most um, cumbersome step is just to get that base down. But it's necessary and you don't want to hurry through it. You want to be patient as you're doing it. And get water on all these little areas. Let's dab a little bit more water. Let's water first. We've got a leaf in here, I believe. You know what, I'm going to double check my picture to see if I have a leaf in there. I think I do, yep. Sometimes I'm not even sure. I don't illustrate them, so I 
don't always know either exactly what something is. I think I have all of my first coat of pink. Oh, nope, there's one little area right here. Okay. Give it a quick scan. All right. And you know what? I can always go back and fill it in if I find something. So that is the first the first coat, so to speak. So I've worked all around this already. Now I'm going to start working between these two colors. So I've got the red lilac, which is my purple, and my cerise. I'm going to set my cerise off to the side here. And I'm going to start, this is what you're going to see. See how flat this one looks compared to this? Once I start adding this red lilac in, it's really going to come to life. And you're going to see how quickly and easily, but I will tell you this. This red lilac is an incredibly vibrant color. It's um, very, very strong. All of these watercolors are very, very strong. So we're not going to be putting as much color down with this one as we did with the cerise. And we're also going to change techniques. So we were doing wet to wet, all right? So I was applying a wet marker or wet paint to a wet surface. Oop, I just see a little bit of pink right here. I was applying, um, or a little bit of white right here where I missed. I was applying wet paint to an already wet surface. And we're not gonna do that you see how that went all through that whole area? It's because I wet the whole area instead of just one section at a time and it just went pshh. So I'm going to use my towel to pull some of that up, get some of that water up. Okay, so this time now we're going to be coming in with, we're going to be going wet, which is the color, to dry because we're going to be working on a dry surface. So this is my red lilac and you, have, you just have to have a very, very light touch here. So all I'm going to do, I don't know if we could zoom this part in maybe a little bit, Alan. Can we do that? I'm literally just going to dab some teeny little dots in here right where I want the shadow. Keep zooming. Keep zooming. Yeah, zoom it in. Uh, I don't know if I can. Why? It's not it's not zooming anymore? Oh. All right. That's all I can do. All right, but let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Is that a little bit better? We look on the other screen and see how we look. So here I added a little bit of this red lilac. I have a tiny little bit of water on my brush and this is where we get a little more precise. You can see how I'm pulling that through just a little bit and I'm going up the line and just kind of framing that in. Look how that deepens that just a little bit. I'm going to do that over here now. Literally just maybe three or four little dots really control the amount of water and this is why you need a really fine tip brush. I'm going to move this around. Just a little bit of detail there. A couple little dots at the base. A little dabble do you here. What is that from? A little dabble, do ya? Uh, something. <laughs> you I don't think that was it. <laughs> now, if I had put water down first, that purple would have shot everywhere. So I don't, and, and that's not at all what I want. I want to really control it. So I'm going dry paper, and I'm putting my color down onto that. I'm 
I'm not necessarily outlining everything. Brill clean. What? Brill cream. Brill oh, you're telling me what the... He's saying it was Brill cream. Yeah, that was something required. <laughs> oh, okay. I've actually heard of that. <laughs> So let's come in here just a tiny little bit. See what a difference that makes? It just brightens it right up and brings it to life. Couple little dots. Tiny little bit of water. Dry off my brush a little bit and then blend. See? Literally two little dots there because it's so tiny. I don't want to overpower the, um, the pink with that lilac. I see a little bit up here where I should have some pink. So I put a little bit of water down. There we go, just a tiny little bit of that pink. Move it around. There we go. Now if you get a harsh line here and you don't like it, a little tiny little bit of water on your brush, blend it out a tiny bit. But I think it looks really pretty when we have those big dramatic differences in color. I'll come in here. And I, I just work on one tiny little area at a time because if I went through and put this purple down in so many other places, it would dry before I got to it and it's not going to move around as well. So I do one little area at a time. Helps me to control it a lot better. What do you think? What do you guys think? Couple little dabs. So I dabbed at the base and right up where that meets. Get a little bit of water. I dab the water off. And literally just move that purple around a little bit. Look how pretty. You can see the big difference between this one and this one over here. That little bit, that purple is just such a wonderful depth of color. And I bring it up just a little bit around on that brown stamped edge so it doesn't look quite so brown and it all of a sudden that brown edge starts to just fade away so now I'm going to go a little bit deeper I'm still just doing a couple little dots in here and I'm still working one petal at a time all right Tiny bit of water, gently move that around. I'm going in an upward motion just a little bit. A little bit more water. Blending that out just a little, very little. A little more water because I want it to move. Look how pretty. All right. This doesn't matter so much if I, because I'm not wetting the entire area, I can work in all of the different areas that I need to be. I don't have to skip around to different places. 
because I haven't flooded the whole area with water. So I don't have to worry so much about all this blending in. You know, between all the different areas. Pay attention to these little shadowed areas that the illustrator gives us. I focus on those a little bit. I'm going to come into the center where I need some color, where I need some shadow. So I'm going over these areas that are stamped in brown. Now if I had stamped those in black, I wouldn't be getting the same effect. You probably wouldn't even notice that purple up over them at all if I had stamped it in black because it would be too harsh, it would be too strong, it would overpower it. Look at that little bit. It's so pretty. Move over to here. A couple little dots. Actually, going to bring a little bit out here. There we go. So I've dotted around this petal. Very gently moving that around. I keep every time you see me reach up, I'm reaching for water, but because we were zoomed in, you can't really see what I'm doing. I get a little bit and then I dab it off. And just very gently move that color. You will see me adding some uh, pink back in a little bit as I go, a little bit later. I'll be sharpening up, freshening up some of that pink, deepening that just a little bit. There we go, a little more water there just to soften that. I'm gonna soften this area here a bit too. There you go. A few little dots. Now right here where you can see the little creases, we have these little stamens in the center here that we're going to take care of eventually. Just a little bit of water, soften this edge a bit, push that water around or that color around. Soften up where I put the purple just a little bit. It's really, really crucial that you have a very fine brush. Okay. Wow, we're already an hour in. So we're going to be taking a little bit of a break. I'm not so sure we're going to get to the full finished card. That's not a card making class anyway, right? It's watercolor. And my goal is to show you the techniques that I use. So if we don't finish completely, what we may end up doing is working in this area up here. And then you can apply what, what I'm teaching you into here, except I do want to get to this bit right here. 
because that's a really nice stem there to show you. Um, so I think what we'll probably, we may end up finishing this area and then moving to um, you know, letting you guys finish and continue practicing and working with the techniques on the rest of it. This is not something that you can really rush through. It's also something that as you step back, let me blend that out a bit, as you step back and move away from it. So once I pull out from this, like right now what you're seeing is pretty intense in terms of how the color looks because we're really zoomed in on it. But once I pull back on that, you'll see how it really looks. Okay. Let me do just, just tiny little bit right in here. I'm not dragging that paint through there. I'm literally dabbing it. All right. So, we are literally at five o'clock right now. What I'd like to do is give everybody about five minutes to go to the restroom, to get something to drink. I'm gonna put a timer on, so you're gonna see that. Let me switch this back, hold on a minute. Okay, so, oh, I'm all zoomed in here. Okay, so we're gonna do five minute break. So go to the bathroom, get yourself coffee, whatever it is, and we will meet back here at five. I'm gonna put a timer on here so you'll see that countdown and I will see you in five minutes.
Hey, we're back. <laughs> I hope you guys stretched your legs. I want to give a shout out to Zoe. I was just looking really quickly through here. Zoe, who is, uh, she's in Australia. These are, these are her stamps. She illustrated these, these images, these cherry blossoms. So, hey girl. <laughs> Alrighty, we're going to jump right in because we don't have a lot of time. So let me switch the camera back. Um, let's see here. Oops. <laughs> I always love it when I do that. I do that in reverse. I like get rid of the, I get rid of the green screen, whatever. I'm supposed to switch back before I do the thing. So you don't see the green screen behind me, but oh well. We're not professionals. We're just doing the best we can. Alrighty, so. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more in here with this purple and then I'm going to move to the branches and then if I get that done, we'll move back to this purple. I was reading through some of your comments and um, it is, it is quite amazing when you add just this extra little bit of color and it just makes it pop. Just that little bit of that purple. Let me brush this off a bit. I got a little too much. Blend that. The amount of control or the amount of water that you put on your brush is key. I do not work with the um, the water pens for this. Um, because I don't feel like I, but the water pens, when I say that, I mean the, like the aqua brushes where it, it has that, that, um, that tube where you fill it with water and then you squeeze it. I, I, I find that I don't have as much control with something like that. I like a teeny tiny, fine little water brush when I'm working on this. All right. I want to move to this section here and I want to show you this branch because I think that it's a really, it's, it's the largest piece of branch that we have here. And I think that it is, um, very important. I need a piece of paper. Let's see, you know, let me just use one of these. Actually, you know what, this is going to get cut off anyway up at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this. It'll, it'll be in one place. So don't panic when I do this. I just want you to see these colors. This is, all right, I, I'm, I'm gonna mention my, one of my little gripes about these markers. It's the only thing I don't like about them is that they have this little sticker on here on the cap. I wish it had the name of it somewhere on the marker and not a sticker that was gonna wear out or rub off eventually. So that kind of bothers me. But anyway, uh, sandstone is here. I want you to see what these colors look like. That is curry. And then the olive green, that's my green, 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 right? So the main color that I'm going to work with, and, and I did this up here because I'm going to be cutting that off when I do the card because this card stack is so much bigger. Just like I do with all of my uh, coloring, I, I will turn the image however I need it to be. So I'm going to start working here with a wet to dry, so I've got curry. I'm literally going to just dab a little bit of this color in. These colors are very, very strong. And I wanna start very, very gently. So I'm gonna start pulling that in with the water just a little bit, pull it down and across. Tiny little bit up in here and then right here where we have that little uh, Y where the branches come together. Okay, give that a moment to dry. I'm going to take some of this color right up into here as well. Okay. 
Hmm. Let me look at something in here. I got to look at it in this direction. I'm looking at it upside down. Come right up here. There we go. I don't want too much. Sometimes I do have to turn it the right direction so that I can see the image properly. So I'm not pulling this all the way in everywhere. Tiny little bit underneath. Very, very little water. So now we have, it's just kind of a hint, a little bit of a beginning. So while I moved up into this space here, this space dried. And because I don't put a tremendous amount of water down, it dries pretty quickly. So I've pulled that water across. I've left this little bit of a highlight. And that's going to be where, in my mind, the light is kind of hitting it. So now the color I've got here is sandstone. And I'm going to push this up. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to pull it. Pushing and pulling. Pushing would be up. I, I prefer to pull the color down, so I grab the color up the top and I pull it down into what I'm doing. I hear Alan typing over there. Does that mean we're going to have a question? No, the question was what, um, the colors you pulled are out of the 72 set. They're only in the 72 set? Okay, that's a question. No. Um, the colors that I pulled you will definitely find in the 60 set and the 72 set. Um, the only difference between the 60 and the 72 are the neon colors. So the 60 really has all the colors you're going to need. Um, unless you want to do some things with neon. I like having it just because I never know what I'm going to do. So. Um, for the difference of just having those 12 colors, to me, it was worth it to have the 70 set. Can you mention the paper? Or 72, name? I should say. What was the name of the paper again? This paper is Fabriano. Let me show you. It's Fabriano right here. Whoa, we're zoomed in. <laughs> Fabriano. Okay, so here's the Fabriano. Aquarella Artistico. Extra white, 100% cotton, cold press. Cold press. This is a block or a brick, I guess you would call it. Um, and I can speak to that in a moment. Where'd my brush go? Here it is. All right. So, let me add a little bit more water in here to soften up that edge. There we go. Get some of it off of there. Move that color around just a little. And I'm going to let that dry and then we're going to come back to it. And right now it's not looking very, you know, I want it to be brown, but I want it to be green. And um, I don't want it to be really, really strong. So um, we'll come back to that in a moment. I'm going to come up here and do the same kind of thing with this area. Whoops, wrong one. This is my curry. This is the area that I was working on and I want to get an area done for you guys. So I'm going to come back here and I am dabbing this in every so often, not all the way around the entire thing. I missed pink right there. I see that. See what I mean? As I'm working, I find things that I missed. So I'm dabbing in a here and there and I'm not doing it all the way I'm not tracing that line or anything because the paint is going to move so I want a minimal amount all right here's what I do I dip into my water and then I let some of that come off and I'm going to pull this down 
I tend to get a little more control when I'm pulling it rather than when I'm pulling the color down into what I'm working with rather than starting here and pushing up. I like to start up and pull it down. But that's just my preference. I would suggest that you work with whatever your preference ends up being. So these branches are a big part of the reason why I chose the shade of brown that I did when I stamped my image. Because there's also, you know, there's different browns. We've got a, I think it's called coffee bean is our darkest brown. And um, I think that would have just been way too dark. It would have been very much like if I would have stamped in the raven I would have just ended up with something that was so dark that I couldn't work with the color and I wanted the color that I stamped in to work with what I'm doing. So you can see how I just kind of almost outlined it a little bit, but I've got some areas that are a little bit darker than others. I'm going to go back in with my curry and strengthen some of these and give myself a little bit more. I'm always very cautious with how much I put down at first because I can always add more but it's harder to remove it. I'm going to pull this in just a little more. If anybody has any questions about anything, Alan is standing by. Okay. Oh, that is a good question. They, the 72 sets have been ordered. We sold out of them pretty quickly. Uh, they have been ordered. I honestly can't answer that. Uh, because of COVID, I don't know how fast um, the distributor is able to get things shipped. Um, I don't know what their backlog is. Um, I, I wish I had a better answer for you. Do you guys want me to put it out for a pre-order so that you... The thing is with a pre-order, a pre-order means you have to pay for it now but it also reserves it for you and when it comes in, it will automatically ship to you. So I guess, let me know if you want that. I'm gonna go in with this little bit of pink because I see an area here and I'm going dry paper here. I did the dry paper in this area because it's small enough, I really just need to control it I missed an area with the pink. So I'm getting that kind of quickly. Oh, that would have been bad. <laughs> that would have been bad. There we go. So let's see, we've got curry. We're gonna continue in here. We've got a little leaf over here, a couple little leaves. I'm just dotting this in. Here and there. Tiny, tiny little bit. And then I'm gonna move that color around with my brush. And all the while this area up here is drying. One thing you will definitely develop with watercoloring, it's patience. My son probably wishes I had enough, as much patience with him <laughs> as I do with watercoloring.
Of course, my watercolor doesn't get mouthy. So. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Watercolors don't talk back. There you go. There we go. See how it just starts to come to life? It's just so pretty. I love it. So, all right. Now we've got our sandstone. So I'm going to come in here with very minimal sandstone this brown in here and that's just going to give me some areas that are a little bit darker I see an area where I need some pink not sure how I missed that but I did right there I've even been in that spot a couple of times working there all right, so now I'm going to push that brown just gently. This is that sandstone. Because I like to have a little mix of brown and green. See how pretty that is? Just so pretty. I love it. I may not even use the olive um that olive green was it the olive yes yeah, the olive green is that really really dark one i may not even use that because i don't think i need it so this is the sandstone now this sandstone you really need to use sparingly because it's very dark and that's just going to give you a couple of areas that just kind of bam they're just Grab your attention. I'm not covering up all of the curry that I put in there. Just kind of giving a little bit of a mix. What do you think? How's it look, Alan? I'm going to come in here with a little bit of the curry because I think I need a little more green. I'm going to pull that green in just a tiny bit and right up. There you go. All right, so I'm going to come back down here a bit. This is a bigger area, so I am going to actually use a little bit of the olive green. But uh, I'm telling you, it's going to be very minimal because that color is very strong. very very green we're going to end up putting some of the sandstone back over it just to tone it down a bit but it's going to just give us a depth of color that i think is going to be really important <clears throat> two tiny little dots there some up here too. All right, so I'm going to let that dry and then we're going to come into this area. And then we'll do this same thing again. So we're going to start with the curry. Just kind of dot it around in here where this kind of makes a little Y. Add some color up on the little branch a bit. Turn this around because I like to pull the color down and across. Go. 
out a tiny little bit. Is my head getting in the camera at all, or are we good there? Mm -hmm. I'll smooth that out a bit. I'm going to dab that. So I put a little water in, dab it. If I feel like I've put too much color in, water down, and then blot, and it's going to pull some of that color back up. You have to do that like right away. You won't be able to get away with that in even 10 minutes from now. So this is very green, which I don't want, but I wanted to have that green kind of undertone. So now I've got my sandstone again, and we're going to bring that in just a bit and tone down that green a little bit. I like that. I think that looks pretty good. So by putting that green, so I did a little bit of the sandstone, then I went with the olive and then the sandstone again. So I did a nice base of the brown. Then when I added that green onto it, how do I explain this? Um, by adding the green under it, it gives it a really deep, dark shadow look and then I went back over it with the brown so it tones down the green, but it gives me that really, really rich shadow under it that I like a lot. So it looks like the light is hitting it from up above. That's my goal anyway, that's the intention. All right, anybody have any questions, comments, anything? Um, no, lots of comments, but no questions. No questions from anybody? No. Corrine says her paper came in. Yay! Oh, Irene's here too. Oh, pretty cool. Hi. Go. <laughs> oh, Irene's got to go. <laughs> she just stopped in for a moment. All right, so here we are. We've got this whole portion is done, it looks like. We've got a half an hour, so let's continue and see how much more we can get through. This is actually not done. There's an area up in here. I've got my red, what is this called, red lilac, again. So pretty, I love these flowers, I think they're just gorgeous. Oh, you know what I wanna show you, I'm gonna show you what I do with the center, because that's what I haven't done. Let me show you what I do with the center. I literally just come in with my cerise in the center, and this is where I go dry paper and um, dab the marker in just a little bit. Very small amount of water. I don't want to cover all of the white, but I want to just kind of explode those little dots that I put in there a little bit. Maybe explodes not a good one. I just want them to just kind of spread out a little bit with the water. Okay, just like that. And let me see if I can show you this in here. I came in and I didn't put the water to it. I came in with that purple and I kind of dab into those areas a bit where I want to really show off those little stamens because the stamens are brown. So all I'm doing is dabbing on some of them almost in the shape that they are to kind of highlight them a bit. OK, 
kind of go on three sides where you see that it, it, it is like a little circle. See how it kind of starts to look like we've got these little shapes in here? I'm not going to add water to it either. If I add water to it, it's going to lose the definition that I am trying to create with this. It's only going to be so clear. There's a lot going on in there, right? And we leave some of it white so it shows off and highlights the area around it. I'm going to come into here a bit. Does your hand ever get tired? Does my hand get tired? No. No, and I have arthritis in my hands, but doing this, no, my hand doesn't get tired. My hand gets, I, I hold this brush very, fairly loosely, to be honest with you. My hand will get more tired with Copics than it does this. Because I'm really just kind of holding the brush loosely, because you want there to be some freedom with it. You want it to flow. I think that looks pretty, pretty awesome. I'm going to give a little more right up in here. It's one of the things I do. I tend to go back and define a little more as I look at it. There we go. I think that makes that pop just a little more. I'm going to hit the top of this tiny bit. So here I took that little bit there, and I know I have a little bit of that purple on my brush. Hit a bit right at the tip there. I think it looks pretty. I hope you guys are liking this. I know it's not really exciting to watch somebody do this, so... I appreciate that you're here. Let me add a little bit of the that sandstone, a little more. Now these smaller areas with the branches, I would not add that darker green in there because it's just going to overpower it. It's going to be too much. So, you know, that's why I'm not putting that, what is that one called, olive green? I'm only using the olive green down here. If I tried to put that up in here, I think it's just too much. It's too big. And I actually did it on this one, and I, and I, I think it looks a little too strong. I like it softer. But that's up to you. You can do it however you like. It's the beauty of art. Something I was going to show you, too. Let me show you. Um, I'm going to come back in here and add, I'm not sure, I don't even think I need to add any more color in here. But this is something you can do, and this is another technique. And this is why I wanted this. If I put color down here, I can take my brush, so I go into my water, dab off a bit, I can pull my color up just like this, as though it's a, 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 um, just a paint and I can add just a tiny little bit in here as well to richen and, and deepen these areas. So it's more like I'm painting with it in a traditional sense. Now it's not gonna flow with the water so much that way. So I've cleaned off my brush water on my brush and I'm going to soften these edges just a little. Alright, 
and then I would come back in and I would richen that up with that purple. You can see the difference here when I have a couple layers of the pink versus where I bring in that purple. It just makes a huge, huge difference in the depth of the color. That's why I like to use colors that um, really, uh, I guess, contrast nicely. So since I started that over here, I'm going to continue that around on this one. A little more water. Now that was just water right in there. This is also a really, really good place if you want to create your own colors. You don't really need to do that with these markers, but if I wanted to combine colors and I put these two colors down, okay? So if I have my pink and my purple, and I want to combine them, so let's say I want to put water down here so I have a spot to work with, pick up both of my colors, mix them, and I could put it down here. So now my color has a little more purple in it. So it's a great way of combining your colors. That's another reason why I would use this. Um, with these Karin markers, you don't really have to do that. Now, if you do have the 24 pack, you can mix your own colors just by doing that. And it's super easy to do it. But you can see the difference in how that color looks versus this one here. This one has a little more purple in it. This is very, very vibrant pink. Okay, so it's a really, really good, easy way to mix your own. All right, I'm going to go back and I'm going to start adding some of the purple, dabbing that in. Blending that up just a little bit. Whoops, get some more water. So I like there to be a smooth transition of the color. I don't want it to be too harsh. I'm going to do that area right there a little bit darker. Blend that out a bit. You want to be really careful that you don't end up looking like you're just tracing these lines. That's another reason why I dab it. Soften that a bit because it looked like it was too strong a transition. 
Any questions from anybody? Yeah. Everybody's so quiet. Do you have any other um, tips for watercoloring? Um, you think of? I, you know, my biggest tips with watercoloring are really make sure you're using good tools. Okay, you want a good paper. You want to make sure that your paper um, and your watercolor medium, whatever you're using, work well together. You shouldn't have to fight your medium to make it work. And different papers are going to react differently to the different paints and things that you use. I would tell you this. Make sure you have a very good, um, a thicker, if you don't use this paper, make sure you, ha you are using one that is um, a really good, a, a good heavy weight to your paper. Um, you don't want a paper that's going to pill very easily. You want one that's going to accept a fair amount of water because we're applying it over and over and over again with layers. So you want to make sure that you have something that's going to accept a lot of water without pilling. And you want to make sure that you can go through and um, move the color through the paper nicely around, you know, around on the paper. You know, and I, I have some papers that, that I purchased because, you know, somebody said that they worked really, really well for them. And then I found out they didn't work very well for me. Um, I have some that I purchased early on that were just really inexpensive and that's fine, but it is a situation where you kind of get what you pay for. So I'm going to dab in here. Because I want this to look less mottled with the lines and more like there's that center of the flower going on. Good question, can you add color the next day? Yes, you can. You can you can continue doing that, absolutely. Now, you may not be able to keep moving the color that is already there, but you can certainly add another layer. I come back to mine all the time. I can't tell you how many times I look at it and I'm like, oh my goodness, I want to deepen that, I want to richen that a bit, I want to shadow it, whatever it is. And uh, so yes, you can absolutely, you can walk away from this. You know, sometimes if I'm, if I'm painting something and it's, you know, one of two things can happen. Sometimes I can get frustrated. It's not coming out the way I want it. Um, or I'm tired or I get, or just get interrupted with, you know, life. Something happens. Somebody needs me, whatever it is. Um, or I just, I just get tired. And I'll step away and leave it at my desk and I'll come back to it the next day. And just, like, I could leave this right here and I can come back to this next week. I could come back to this next month and I can continue adding to it. Look how quick and easy just that one little area it just comes together really nicely. I really can't say enough about these markers. I think they're fantastic. It's the first, um, there, there is another marker that I use. I wouldn't say this is the first marker I've used. It's the first one I have used that is, um, I think, what, incredibly user friendly. I like the size of the marker. Um, I think the colors are just beautiful. I love the size of the tip. It's got a brush tip, which is really nice. Um, so, you know, if you want to do calligraphy or something with this, you can with these markers. Maybe calligraphy isn't the word I'm looking for, but it's just more that that handwriting that is really popular that I wish I had time to learn because I think it's really pretty. But this is, it's got a beautiful brush tip on it. 
So it's really, really nice. So they will definitely, um, you'll definitely be able to use them for other things. But they're fantastic for watercoloring. As you can see, they're very, very easy to work with. I don't put a lot of stuff in the store that is not, uh, that aren't LDRS products. You, you will very rarely see me do that. Um, and um, I was actually not even planning on putting these in the store because we're not necessarily a retail store like that. Um, I mean, we are a retail store, but we're not. It's, we're not a, you know, one-stop shop kind of retail store, and I have no intention of being that either. I have way too much here, so i got to lift some of that up. Um, but I love these markers so much that I, when I decided to use them for the class, I thought I wanted to make sure that I made them available. See how just lifting that little bit up, you get too much in there, wet it, use a cloth, and, um, and it'll pull some of that color right up, and then we're good to go. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I hope I'm not boring you. I'm so worried that I'm boring you. See, I'm going back to this area right here. It just isn't, there we go. I just feel like I don't have the depth that I want in that spot. There we go. That looks a little better. Oh, well, somebody asking what the markers are? No, will it be available after the watch? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, this will be out. It'll be on our YouTube channel, this video. It'll be on the YouTube channel. It'll be, um, you know, in the Facebook group, the Facebook page. Yep, yeah, we'll definitely have it out there. You know, my goal with this is just to kind of share with you a little bit. Um my processes, how I do things. You know, if I can teach you a little something, then great. And I know, you know, watercoloring is one of those things that I think a lot of people shy away from because they think it's going to be really difficult. You know, and in crafting these days, we do a lot of really quick color kind of things. Um, and I would say this is definitely not a quick color kind of a situation, you know, when it comes to watercoloring. But I think that the results are just fantastic. It's my favorite medium to work with. You ask my husband, man, he was, uh, he would just lose me for hours in the studio. <laughs> Do you make any samples for HSN or just the design team? Um, that's a good question. Uh, it's mostly design team. Uh, typically, usually I don't have that kind of time to do it. Um, but a lot of the time I will do the, uh, I, I put together whatever the demonstration is going to be for the live show. And I do that because, um, because I like to work with the product, number one. And uh, number two, if I'm going to demo something, I want to demo something that I've designed. And, and then I know it better if I've done that too, if I've designed the demo. But it is very important for me to work with the products. I don't design the products in terms of the illustration. I definitely have my hand in what the products are going to be, what the themes are going to be. I approve everything. I test everything myself. Um, and I make sure that whatever we're putting out is a really good quality product. If, it's, if there's any issues at all, it doesn't go out. It simply doesn't go out. 
Does Karen have different size brush tips? Uh, not to my knowledge, but I'm also not an expert on their products. Um, so I can't answer that with any bit of confidence. I, I don't know for sure, but to my knowledge, I would say no. Um, I didn't see anything like that. So all I'm doing as I'm going through here is just adding in some more of that, that purple and I'm kind of defining some of the areas with some shadow. Not liking this little bit here. So water comes in, color lifts off. All right. Now that is not something that you can do later. If you want to lift color off, you need to do that before it dries. You know, you might be able to lift a tiny little bit off of it later, but nothing like if you catch it right away. There we go. So we're getting closer. I don't think we're going to be too far from the end. I think maybe we'll get this little area done here and then that's going to be it. But um, hopefully you guys will be able to finish yours up just with the stuff that I've covered. I was thinking of doing one of these um, for a like maybe one of our polka doodles stamps like Holly or something so that I could talk to you about coloring skin and hair. Don't know when I'd be able to put it together, but I guess let me know if that would be something that would interest you. Is it possible for you to show the end of your paintbrush? Meaning the the brush end of it, the brush portion. Yeah, let me let me finish this little section right here. There. So the end of my paintbrush. Let me get my marker covered. Okay. Do it over here. This is, uh, it's a Winsor & Newton. I have a lot of Winsor & Newton. I really, really love their quality. This is a triple zero. It is a round, which is important. It doesn't, it's not a flat brush. It's not, I don't know all the names of them. Some of them are like flat, some are fanned off. Some of them are chisel or, you know, angled and so on. But this is a round. So, um, and it's very small, very tiny. It's because it's a triple zero. So I technically, I typically will paint with either a triple zero or a double zero. And I don't go any larger than that when I'm watercoloring because the images are so fine and they're so small. The larger your brush, the more water it's going to hold. I don't want to lose the control that I need in these smaller areas. If I was working with a much bigger picture that I was painting, then I would be able to use a larger brush. But we're working with stamps. So, um, so I do work with a really fine, small little brush when I'm doing it. And again, one of the, one of the things I mentioned is I, I do use a paintbrush. I don't use one of those, those aqua brushes. And if you're comfortable with an aqua brush, that's fine. I'm not trying to say anything bad about them. Um, I prefer to have the control over the water myself instead of having it in that that foam kind of tip where it's always wet it's also you're also not going to get as fine a tip as you're going to with an actual um, watercolor brush like this or paintbrush like this so hopefully that helped a little <laughs> Which one you're going to do? Say that, here, I'm going to switch my camera again. Okay, what was that? 
if you're going to do a face and hair and that type. Oh, if I'm going to do a person, like a character. Yeah, let them know which one. Yep, let you know which one. Um, yeah, my guess is it would be one of our Hallies, and, and, I, and I would definitely let you know which one. Um, the reason I would choose Holly over Winnie is because I think Holly has much more defined hair and features, and, um, and a lot of those, the Hallies that we have, have uh, a lot of accessories in there and stuff, which are really, really fun to paint. And those are, painting those is very different than painting a floral like this. Um, the, you know, the technique for skin, the technique for hair. Um, hair for me is always the hardest to paint with a paintbrush. It, it just, it just is. And a lot of the time I will actually bring in, um, uh, I, I will sometimes do Copics right over the top of my watercolor paints. I will bring in pencils and I'll, I'll define it a little bit better with that. Uh, but, uh, but again, having a tiny little brush like this, uh, makes all the difference too when you're doing hair because you can get those really fine little, you know, little, I don't know, pieces of hair, I guess, just to give it that texture that you need. But it's, 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 it's the, it, it is, it, that's probably the most difficult thing for me to use, um, to, to do with watercolor. So, and, you know, and again, I, I'm not an expert. These are just, this is just the way that I do it. So hopefully you guys learned something, but I will definitely let you know, um, if there's enough interest in it, I will definitely do it. Uh, so let me know if you want me to do it and, um, and let me know if this time, <coughs> excuse me, let me know if this time slot on a Saturday is good. The weekend is better for me just because we have a lot going on during the week and we do the other two lives during the week and there's a lot that goes into those as well. So um, anyway, I will have, you know, this card is already up there. It's on, um, it's already up. It's part of the, you know, the little water class ad and stuff that we did. Uh, so, you know, you guys can continue and, and follow along and finish that if you want to make that same card or you can do something different with it too. But I hope you guys learned enough that you can finish it. I, I wish we could have finished it, but there is a lot to cover and it's really not a card class. It was intended to be a more of a technique based class. So hopefully you guys got something out of it and I hope you enjoyed it. So any other questions? No? All right. Well, it's six o'clock. So I think we're done, but I, I'm so glad you guys showed up today. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Um, I know, you know, we've all got a lot of stuff going on. So just, you know, that you guys would take some time out of your day. And even on a weekend, it's probably, it's gorgeous here. So if it's gorgeous where you are, then, you know, thank you even more <laughs> for, you know, for, for, you know, taking time out of a gorgeous day. <laughs> so anyway, thank you and good night or a good day, or whatever it is. What, good question? Morning, good morning even, depending <laughs> on where you are, I don't know. All right, bye, thanks everybody.